Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Buss here with Traders Profit Compass with your morning look at markets for Monday, September 20th. It is 6.35 as I'm starting the video. Uh, I'm sure you're aware already that uh, we got a lot of red on the board. Uh, don't forget to run your video player at 1.25x. Taking a quick look at futures. Uh, the commodity complex is down roughly 2% oil, nat gas, and copper. Um, large caps down 1.3%, NASDAQ down 1%, small caps down 1.8%, Nikkei down 1.3%. Uh, we've got that Evergrande uh, property management situation over in China that's starting to um, royal markets, spiral out of control, whatever you want to say. Um, they've got some major debt payments due this week and they're probably not going to be able to uh, uh, make those payments so that's causing some turmoil Hong Kong markets were down about three percent and also uh, China is not open uh, China markets uh, mainland China markets are not open uh, today or tomorrow so it's going to be you know Wednesday morning till we kind of you know, find out what happens. I'm sure the regulators are all over this situation and figuring out what they're going to do. Uh, the main the main thing is uh, who are the counterparties? And and just like you know, if you go back to Lehman and all that stuff back in the Great Financial Crisis, you know, just who had the exposure was one of the main question marks with. Uh, you know, everybody pointing the finger at someone else. Uh, that's what's happening with Evergrande. N you know, nobody knows really where where that uh, exposure lies and how it's going to get resolved. So that that is certainly something that's uh, weighing on Asian markets, and of course that rolls right on through Europe and into uh, our markets. So on the on the uh, macro front, not a lot today. We've got the housing index number, earnings tonight. Uh, we've got Lennar after the bell. That might be kind of interesting to see how uh, that uh, uh, marquee name in the Home Builder Index is doing. And then, of course, we've got Jay Powell uh, that kicks off the FOMC meeting tomorrow, but then has the announcement at 2 o'clock on Wednesday, followed up by a presser, and I think most people think they're going to uh, announce tapering. Of course, you know, if markets plunge, they may change their mind. I, I have no idea, but um, we'll just have to see. So let's dive into the markets, kind of see where we're at. What I've done this morning is I've gone through all the... the um, indexes and fat man names to see where they're trading pre-market and I've marked those places on the chart so we can kind of take it from from where things stand here at uh, a little after 6 30 in the morning so the VIX uh, trading right now at about 25 so I think uh, I mean that was the target number that we have been talking about last week we closed Friday above 20, and that uh, had the door open for a move to 25. As you can see here, that capped volatility the last time around. I think uh, for today, it's, it's real simple. If you see volatility uh, continue to drive higher, that'll be a you know, continued red flag warning, etc. Uh, I've got another level up here about 2750 that I think is the next line of resistance. And if you see if you see VIX over 27 and a half today or in the next days ahead, you're probably seeing a, a pretty, pretty sharp sell off. Now, on the flip side of that, um, if you if you see them start driving it down, you know, there'll be a big gap here in the chart. See them drive it down. That'll be a positive thing. Now, I'm not going to show you the charts, but I just want to pass along. 
you know, we keep track of those uh, NAMO and NIMO oscillators. Those are right smack dab in the middle of the range. So they are not predictive at all at this level. Now, they're going to take a dive today, but we're not going to know kind of where we stand until after the close. So um, those won't be particularly uh, helpful today in our, um, you know, in how to read the markets. So let's let's run through this. Uh, RSP, our equal weight SPY. Uh, we lost the 50 on Friday, as you can see here. I would be keying off of 152 is the top of the box. And then your next level below that, uh, probably going to be in the 150 to 149 range. And, you know, as we usually say, when you go outside the box and then come in, your natural target is the bottom, which is uh, 146 down here. So I've got some intermediate levels for you. I realize that you're probably not trading this particular instrument, but I think it's a good thing to keep handy just to give you a read on uh, the broader market indexes. Uh, and here's SPY Daily. Came down. Almost tagged the 50, uh, but not quite. Uh, and this morning, when I took a read on it, we were right here at 436. And that was one of the levels that we had been looking at on the downside. Now, what I want you to do, uh, either in the pre-market, right before we open, or soon after we open, is... Mark your overhead gaps. You know, there'll be a gap here from yesterday's close at 441.40 down to, you know, 436 or 435 or 437, wherever it happens to open. You'll have an open gap there, right? And just like we've seen on, on days when we have gap higher, that leaves a gap below, there's a tendency to want to fill that. So, and that's going to be, I believe, your first decent opportunity to, um, one, if you're a nimble trader, that would be an opportunity for you to make some money to get long on the recapture of the bottom of the gap you know, we may go down a little bit first and then rally back up into the gap. You want to be long heading into that gap so you can participate in a, uh, you know, in a potential gap fill. So here's uh, where I have it on the two hour and you see the 50 EMA coming in there. So there'll be... Uh, let's just say we open at 436, we'll have almost a $7, oh, what, what is that? Excuse me, 436 to 441, 442, a, a $5 or $6 gap above. So that would be, that would be, you know, what you want to do in an active trading situation there is, uh, you know, if we go down, then we come back up through 436. You want to buy that with a stop just below and see if there's some vicious rally to uh, to fill that gap. But um, regardless of that, you've got intermediate resistance levels. And then I've got this uh, next support level down at 432. And then 429, if we were to, uh, you know, simply go lower right out of the gate on uh, on SPY. I'm not going to get into the 30-minute charts this morning because it's, it's really uh, not going to be that helpful. You want to kind of zoom out and get the big levels oriented in your mind to, to see where we're you know, where we may be heading, where we may find some decent support. So let's jump up to the cues on the daily chart. On Friday, 
we dropped out of this rising wedge and we stopped right here at that first layer of support right at around three yeah 373 374 but now we've dropped down in the pre-market right here to the rising 50 uh right at about 360 uh what were we at 360 yeah 369 so that is a logical first support there uh, if we lose the 50, then you can look for levels below 365 and then uh, 360 and then 352. Again, here you'll have the uh, gap above to deal with uh, on a potential, you know, run up and gap fill and then roll back over again. I think at this point, I think you've got, especially if we're below the 50, I think you've got to orient yourself to the downside rather than, uh, you know, massively buying the dip. Uh, reason why is if we're below the 50, I think that's the line of demarcation for leaning bearish versus leaning uh, bullish. So uh, today when you're you know you're trading especially for your long you know your longer term accounts you know if we were to go down below the 50 today but then at some point recover it then you can start looking to the upside uh, but i think if we're below the 50 on the daily charts i think you've got to uh, either uh, be in a neutral to bearish posture uh, in that in that uh, particular situation. But here on the two hour, you've got the intermediate uh, resistance levels above. And then you you see we've got a little gap that was never filled from a long time ago. Here between 368 and 369, uh, we were, uh, when I checked, we're set to open right here at 369 at the top of the gap. And, though, and then so if it uh, fills it, we're going to move back into this $8 trading range. And then your targets will be 367 365 and then a gap for, or, uh, back at the bottom of the box down here at 361 uh, back down at the bottom. On IWM, when I looked, we were sitting right here at 218. Of course, that'll leave a uh, $4 gap above. That'll need to get filled. And we're sitting right at the top of this gap here that was never filled in the past. But you can see then uh, when we open, we'll be down in the bottom half of this big trading range. And I think if this gap fills, I think you're going to go ahead and go down here and uh, test the 200 and uh, the bottom of the box down here around 212, 211, and then that would set up well for uh, an objective long entry against the bottom of this box that is held on all these uh, other occasions. Uh, here's a two hour chart just for a little zoom in. Uh, we're down here at 218. Here's that gap. Uh, here are these intermediate levels. Here's the bottom of the box way down here at uh, 210 with a the last time we came down stopped right around 211 so i think those would be your areas where if we were to uh, come down here i think uh, i think that would set up uh, pretty well for a solid try uh, for at least a bounce trade facebook when I looked this morning, we were at about 360. I did not see any kind of big level right there. Uh, actually, let's look at the daily real quick. See where 360 is. Yeah, 360 right in here. I've got a level at, uh, call it 357.50. 
on the daily, but you can see that uh, the 50 comes in at 363. That would be a good, a good um, line for you today to key off of that 60, which is at uh, really right here, uh, right in this area where it closed on Friday, 363 right in there so we're a little bit below that now but not terribly so i think you've got a, a big line here at uh, uh, 357 notice the big volume over price bar there and then if you lose that then you're 364 uh, uh excuse me 354 352 uh heading down uh to lower levels on Apple, we can see that we've been in a pretty pronounced downtrend. I put in a downtrend line just for visual reference, and I checked pre-market. We're trading about 144. I think you could see a bounce here to fill this gap, come in to this downtrend line where you're going to have resistance, and then you know, roll back over again. I think if you were looking for signs to get long for any extended period of time, I think you've got to come up here and uh, uh, break above 146.50, break above this downtrend line, and then, you know, try and get a, uh, put in a couple of uh, higher lows, and then try to see if you can get a higher high up here around 149. But as it stands now, uh, pretty marked downtrend. But uh, use 144 today as your pivot. Uh, Tesla, not too bad. It's down, you know, a few bucks. It's down here around 740. And that's been a good pivot for us uh, for the last week or so you can see it held here held here and now we're going to open here use 740 as your pivot you're going to have a nice big gap above of about 20 dollars up to 760 uh, but then if it drops below you're probably looking at 720 so i think either way that might be a a uh, nice trade because one, you've got a big gap here of uh, $20, and then down below, I don't think I don't think this 725 is going to end up being that meaningful. I think it's going to come right back down in here to 720. That that's been our big line going way back. So I think you can be long above 740 and short below it. And I think you can look for a $20 move in either direction on Tesla. Uh, Microsoft, uh, when I looked, we were trading right here at 297. I think your first area of support is to validate this prior low down at uh, 294.50 ish. But if you lose that, then you're back down into the uh, low. 290s and I wouldn't be surprised if you came back in here to 291 290 but if it can hold 297 then you got a chance to refill that gap up to 300 and then if it can get you know back on its feet then you'd be looking for 302 on uh, on these reclaim levels and just uh, if any of you are new here uh, we've had a lot of uh, new subscribers to the channel, which I really appreciate. Uh, whenever you have price, losing pre-identified levels from above, if you're actively trading, those are going to be short entry locations with a stop just above and then looking lower for your next target. Now, and then the the inverse is true. 
say we opened at 297, then we take some vicious plunge down to 293, and then we start to bounce when price comes back through this level, then that's your buy point. When you recapture levels from below, that's your long entry. And then you can put your stop uh, just below. And then you're looking for the next uh, overhead level of resistance as your first uh, target. Amazon, uh, when I checked, was set to open around 3410, which makes sense right at this prior low, right at these prior lows. So I think that's a really good pivot for this morning. And you'll have a, um, what looks to be like a $50 gap above from 3410 to 3460. That would be nice to catch that gap fill when and, when and if it happens. And then below, back down to the bottom of this prior big gap that we're working within at 3370 but if you lose 3370 then you're most likely going to be coming back in here towards uh, 3300 because you've got a a, uh, a relatively large volume over price void over here in the charts and you really don't get into meaningful support until around 3300 Google uh, here again uh, better than the average bear I checked pre-market we are right here at 2810 which is not far off where we closed on Friday and that lines up well with this low and it lines up well with this level now below that you see this big void and the volume over price profile, that means that price could move pretty fast in that area. So I would be, uh, I would be hyper focused on 2810 for Google. Below, I'd be looking for uh, 2760, and as long as it can hold, then there's a chance for a bounce. But I think. Uh, I think uh, this is one of those occasions where if 2810 were to let go, I think that's a short worth taking uh, given the overall market weakness at that point, even though Google has been one of our uh, strongest charts. And the reason I say that is because of this big void and then, you know, generated from this big bar. There's not going to be a lot of support in this area. And if you lost it right there, I think it would move fast down to uh, 2760. Uh, Netflix didn't look to be down a whole lot. Uh, when I last checked, it was trading about 585. I think that's uh, an easy pivot. Why? Because... It was support here last week, then it was support here, then it was support here on a couple of occasions. So <clears throat> 585 has proven to be a nice uh, uh, pivot area for price. I think <clears throat> if that can hold, you can certainly try a long. And if it doesn't hold, you can try a short. Uh, I think things would start moving faster to the downside below 575. And if uh, if you wanted to, a, uh, a, a way to play that would be to set an alarm at 575 because uh, you can tell on the chart that is where the big volume over price void starts. And uh, I don't see price really coming in or support really coming in to 560. So whether you decide to get short below 
585 or below 575, I think if it starts moving to the downside, this uh, 560 area will be your first um, uh, bigger area of support that you can uh, focus on. Uh, semiconductors uh, set up for a gap down, down to 267. You can see that we've got some uh, pretty big gaps below that were never filled on this quick run up. We've got a gap between 265 and 263. And then we've got one down here, 259.50 down to 256. So uh, this morning, with price right here at 267, notice that was prior support. And notice here, that was an important line as well. And we've got a large volume over price bar there as well. So price stopped where it was supposed to in the pre-market. Um, so I think that's going to be your pivot today. We'll open with a big gap above, and then we'll have a couple of gaps below that'll need to get filled if it decides to go to the downside. So a lot of moving pieces this morning. Uh, what I encourage you to do is uh, today, more than ever, is a day that um, has higher risk of you getting discombobulated as a trader uh, with a lot of stuff moving fast. What you need to have uh, crystal clear in your mind is your trading plan. So let's take your uh, any duration positions that you have, you know, long calls, or if you bought some puts last week heading into the weekend, um, that's going to help you immensely. But uh, know what your game plan is on your duration pos positions. Uh, if you own puts, what's your game plan? Are you going to uh, take profits at a certain level and uh, roll low, roll lo lower? You gonna or you're gonna just see how far we go today? and then take them off and monetize those those puts, or you're just gonna stay in them and keep them as protection. On your longs, have very clear in your mind where you're gonna cry uncle, where's your stop point. And uh, it'll be important today to recognize, and this should be consistent with your trading, Are you operating on a uh, daily closing basis or do you operate on, you know, at any point in time uh, basis for your stops? So, for instance, say you got a stock and your your stop is 100. <clears throat> if you're on a daily closing basis, you know, if it, go, if it drops down to 99 today, you wouldn't be closing that. You'd be closing it at, you know, 358 this afternoon if it has not gotten back above 100, right? Or uh, if you're operating on any point below, you know, and at 10 o'clock it drops, drops down below 100, then you'd be closing that position. Uh, so whatever you do on a normal basis is what you should do today and have those alarms in your system because when things start happening, you're going to forget and you're going to get flustered. And so also too, on your active trading for those that are, that are uh, trading actively during the day, it's going to be important to uh, focus on your levels uh, even more than you normally do. And keep in mind, when uh, 
particularly to the downside, say you had a level at, uh, let's just, let's just take the, this chart, this uh, SMH chart. You see, we've got this breakout level two right here at 262 and we're set to open at 267 and instead of going higher to fill the gap everybody's hitting the sell button right and you get giant red bars keep in mind that when that selling pressure builds a lot of times what you'll see even though we have support marked at 262 what you'll see is an overshoot you'll get you know a couple big red bars print it'll come down here into 261 uh, and maybe at that point get bought up back to 262 so that's where you get that hammer look on a uh, uh, on a bar and let's just pick one out. Here was an example right here, if you can see that bar. I know it's hard to see there, but see where the wick came down, went below the trend line. At the time, that was probably a scary bar, but then they bought it right back up to the, uh, to the support level here at 272.50. So uh, the reason I say that is be wary of getting tricked and what i mean by that is you know you see price come down you see a level here at 262 price goes below it and then you say oh my god here's my big chance to get short because we're below support and then just at the moment you get short they buy it up so uh i would stick to your uh, closing candles rather than you know trying to jump in on a on a big down candle uh, just in time for them to uh, to uh, uh, buy it up now let's look at the other side to give you a scenario we open around 267 they print a couple of big green bars right and bring it right in to close the gap from where we closed Friday here at 271 and then we start to roll over and come into 270 that's where you want to lay on the short when you get the the big bounce you come up and fill the gap and it stalls and then you lose that level from above that's your much higher probability short at 270 versus trying to get short on a, on a big red bar down here uh, you're at much better trade position you've got uh, a much better chance to set yourself an objective um, uh, well it'll be more objective entry but also you'll be able to set uh, a nice stop just above you know the gap so if it stalls and then starts to roll over you set your gap set your uh, alarm just above and then you've got yourself a very nice tight stop to where if it reverses you've got a uh, a paper cut and nothing more so and then lastly, uh, uh, I'll leave you with this. If you feel yourself getting unstable with the price action, or you feel yourself getting flustered, don't try to trade through that. I would suggest just stepping away for five or 10 minutes to clear your head, you know, let you recenter, reorient yourself. And then when you sit back down, take the emotion out of it and say, where are my key levels? What am I, you know, is there a level I can shoot against that's objective? Um, and you may have levels of your own. You may have the levels that I've laid out for you. Um, but either way, 
um, drive your decision making off of the levels, either long or short, and always in an environment like this, you've got to set your stop almost immediately. And in an environment like this, your stops will probably need to be a little bit wider than they normally would just because there's going to be added volatility in the system. Uh, so you don't want to just keep setting, you know, micro stops because just the variability of the bars will, you know, continually take you out and then you'll be like really frustrated with that. And then lastly, let's uh, key off the VIX. 25 do they drive that lower back towards 20 or do they accelerate it higher up to 2750 and beyond if you see that happen we're going to be going much much lower so um, i hope the analysis helped if you're new to the channel uh, thanks for your time this morning hit the subscribe button and the alarm bell that'll get you registered for my youtube content and if you want to go the extra mile uh, jump over in the show notes. There's a link where you can uh, uh, drop in your email on the website. It takes five seconds, and then you'll get all my content. And uh, particularly on a day like today, it might be nice if I see something uh, developing. I will shoot out a note and let you uh, know today, so you won't have to be hunting all over for it or uh, wondering what I'm thinking. I will do my very best to keep you plugged into the price action today. Um, depending, you know, well, either way, higher or lower, right? Uh, they can do anything they want and probably will. They'll probably do both today. Flash it higher, fill the gap, and then go lower or the opposite. We'll just have to wait and see. So, uh, have a good day of trading. Try to remain calm. I'm sure you'll do quite well. This has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.